First, I would like to thank the organizer for the invitation and for giving me the opportunity of uh, presenting this work uh, to you. This is uh, maybe more an overview of several works uh, I've done, and uh, I will try to, to answer the question, how does asymmetric information create market incompleteness? Uh, first of all, uh, what are complete and incomplete markets? In an economic point of view, uh, incomplete markets are viewed as markets in which the number of Arrodebreu securities is less than the number of states of nature. Um, if you consider the financial point of view, complete markets are markets where any contingent claim is attainable, uh, which means that it can be written uh, by means of admissible strategies uh, based on existing assets in the market. And whatever the point of view, uh, it seems to always be a matter of number of assets available. Uh, so what are the known possible sources of incompleteness? First, and the, the most well-known answer is, in fact, the lack of assets. But it's not the only one. Uh, economic works also mention other sources of incompleteness, like friction or ambiguity or other ones. But even if you neglect these ones, even if you consider a model without this kind of additional sources of incompleteness, you can still have um, another source of incompleteness which is not lack of assets and which is less emphasized in the literature and which is the lack of information. Uh, the aim of the presentation today is uh, to try to highlight asymmetrical information uh, as a source uh, of, of incompleteness um, by isolating uh, asymmetrical information effect on the incompleteness uh, of the market uh, because we're going to build a model where all the incompleteness of the market is only due to a lack of information and absolutely not uh, because of lack uh, of assets. So we'll try to give market incompleteness, uh, well, maybe not a new, but another perspective. Um, what is the studied model or the studied problem here? Uh, there is actual differences uh, between information available by different agents on the market, uh, let's say by owners or managers or different kind of investors. So the, the first question is how do investors' information uh, influence their strategy uh, when investing on markets? The first point of view is the, an optimization point of view, and this point of view has already been deeply studied in the literature. What we studied was the hedging point of view, how a different information, another information, can influence and, and in which way the hedging strategy uh, of, uh, of agents. So how hedging strategies are impacted by different informations available. Uh, to be completely honest, the, the um, incompleteness point of view and the link with the lack of information was not the goal of, of all of these models and, and these studies. Uh, we first um, began to try to study the hedging point of view for an insider trader and, and try to, uh, well, the, the first aim was uh, to do the same thing that was done for the optimization point of view, uh, that is to construct detection tests. And I, I went to the uh, regulator, to the market regulator, asking of uh, what was done, what, uh, what they wanted to, to be better done. And the first aim was uh, to construct a detection test. But as you will see, the first conclusion we will uh, uh, present was not uh, compatible with uh, constructing a detection test, and I will explain later on uh, why. Um, so it appeared that uh, when considering a hedging point of view, a problem of hedging with different information, it was more linked to the incompleteness on markets than to really uh, construction detection tests on markets. 
uh, we are going to present two different models. The first one is the, the key one uh, for a small investor investing on a given market. And then we will uh, complex it or adding uh, uh, something that uh, uh, allow the investor to influence the market, to possibly influence the asset prices. And this is this second model that will lead uh, to an incomplete market uh, where the incompleteness is entirely explained, uh, entirely due to the asymmetrical information. Uh, first, uh, the first uh, model, so the simple one for the small investor, is a simple option hedging uh, problem with an additional information. So let's say you have an insider on the market and he... Uh, has an option uh, hedging problem to, be, to solve. Uh, this uh, first model, we consider one risky asset. We can generalize, we, we did this, we, we, we generalize it with uh, several risky assets, but for, for the, the presentation, it is better to only consider uh, uh, one risky asset whose price is driven by an extended Black-Scholes model. So let's say that the, the, the price can be driven by both uh, um, sigma and, and B, the drift and volatility. And we put standard hypothesis um, on this uh, sigma and B to have a complete market for uh, a standard agent having the, the Brownian filtration uh, information. So standard problem, complete standard problem. And uh, we suppose that the agent wants to hedge against a contingent claim, C, in this market with maturity capital T. So his wealth at time capital T is X capital T equal to C. So this is the hedging problem. And what we do is only rewrite it as a backward stochastic differential equation. Again, some standard uh, rewriting. Uh, we denote by pi t the investment strategy at time t, and uh, or we, we write the standard self-financing hypothesis. And rewriting it and integrating it from t to capital T, the problem, the hedging problem, can be rewritten uh, as a backward stochastic differential equation uh, with a specific driver F that is written here that has um, very uh, well kind um, uh, properties. Um, so what we have to solve now uh, is a backward stochastic differential equation. And what I said before is that we will consider that our, our agent has an additional information, so we, we will have to solve this backward stochastic differential equation within a framework where the, the filtration and the, the information is not the standard one. Um, how do we model the insider problem, the information problem? Uh, we consider here initial enlargement of the Brownian filtration, so only uh, additional information seen as a random variable known from the beginning and being adapted to uh, uh, the filtration at a time capital T prime that is greater than the uh, ending time of our problem, strictly greater. Uh, and we add L, the information, to the initial filtration in order to have a bigger filtration Y. Uh, the filtration, the, the hypothesis we work with uh, is a, again in a enlargement of filtration, a well-known hypothesis developed by Jacquard and Jolin in the 80s, uh, and it, it's called hypothesis H3, which says that there exists a probability Q equivalent to the probability, the historical probability measure P, under which the filtration FT and the sigma algebra generated by the additional information are independent uh, for all t less than uh, the t prime, the, inform the time of the information. What is nice under this hypothesis is that all martingales um, remain martingales. So our PF martingales uh, remain martingales under the condition to, to the change of probability. So our FP martingales are still martingales under uh, the big filtration Y and the new probability Q. So we have to change probability, but we keep the um, 
the Martingale property. Uh, financially, um, all standard example and, and uh, of additional information that we can find meet hypothesis H3. So the, this hypothesis is not that restrictive. Uh, for example, if you if you know the price at time t prime uh, of an upcoming takeover bid, or if you have information on the evolution. Uh, of prices in, inside an interval at time t prime, all this fits uh, fit hypothesis H3. I will not enter into into details of this hypothesis, but uh, just uh, to know that well, lots of examples that we can find uh, fit this hypothesis. What is the major problem when uh, changing the filtration? Um, the major mathematical problem is the representation property. And we, when we will have to solve backward stochastic differential equations, the, the major, there are other problems but, that are solvable, but uh, the major difficult problem uh, is the representation property. And what is nice under hypothesis H3 is that, that, is that uh, from a result from Jacob and Chiriaev uh, from 2003, uh, we can provide the needed Martingale representation theorem. So this is really the, the main point uh, and the main problem we encountered. <coughs> so under the large filtration, we have to solve the backward stochastic differential equation. And thanks to uh, at least this uh, um, Martingale representation theorem, we obtain this result, is that, uh, which says that under hypothesis H3 and standard Lipschitz, uh, the same Lipschitz um, hypothesis that uh, we use to solve the backward stochastic differential equations in the small space, um, and under additional Q integrability hypothesis on the driver F, there exists a unique solution of the backward stochastic differential equations in the enlarged space which is good, but which was not good for our purpose of uh, um, uh, constructing building a detection test, is that in fact this only solution is the same as the solution for the non-informed trader. So there is no other solution created by the information. What we proved is that um, any information added uh, fitting hypothesis S3 um, uh, any information does, does not create uh, any other uh, hedging strategy that solves the backward stochastic differential equation. So the insider trader has a unique solution of this hedging problem, but it is the same as the solution uh, in the non-informed trader hedging problem. <coughs> um, same results are obtained in the case of backward stochastic differential equation with random terminal time. So if you consider another problem for an option with a random terminal horizon, uh, same result can be uh, obtained. Uh, and uh, we can extend this conclusion to uh, hedging problems with random time horizon. <coughs> so, in a small investor framework, if the market is complete without the information, uh, no additional hedging strategy uh, is created when accessing to an additional information. Of course, an additional information satisfying uh, hypothesis H3, but as I said, um, there are plenty of, uh, of hypotheses satisfying that. One of the reasons maybe the, not the only one, but one of the reasons is that, is that we consider only a small investor. So an investor whose investment has no impact on the market. Um, so we try to develop a new model where uh, we will uh, take um, the model we, we have presented, but we will add that the informed trader is a large trader or influential trader and he his investment can influence asset prices. So what we will present after is uh, how the market uh, is uh, changed if we, if we add this hypothesis. Um, so the market price with an influential and informed trader is the same as before, but uh, in the drift and volatility, you uh, may have um, uh, X and pi 
uh, that uh, may influence the drift and volatility. You still have uh, the additional information, uh, so, so the initial enlargement of filtration with uh, the uh, L satisfying hypothesis H3 as before. And uh, on the, the price, the, the risky asset price, uh, you can both have a large investor, which means that his wealth uh, is uh, big enough to influence drift and, and, and or volatility of, uh, price, of the price dynamics. Or it can also be an, just an influential agent, which means that maybe his wealth is not big enough, but maybe he is well known on markets and maybe he has followers. Or, um, so his investment strategy by he sells and maybe it will uh, change the, the price on the market. So his investment strategy may influence the drift and, and volatility of price dynamics. For the moment, we do not restrict the form of this influence of X and Pi on, on B and Sigma. We will see after that we, we will have to put um, a hypothesis on this to have uh, results. The fundamental property is the same as in the previous section, uh, which means that we need a Martingale representation theorem under the big filtration and the new probability Q. And uh, it is the same as the one we, ha we had before. Uh, we had before. So we have a complete market for the informed trader. I will present it after. And we can study it and find the solution uh, of uh, all these problems. So uh, find the, the hedging solution uh, uh, of the hedging problem for the informed and influent agent. The difference with the previous model is that a non-informed agent, so an agent who hasn't uh, access to the additional information, is investing on this market and he has access to the, the price, but he's not able to distinguish which part of the price is explained by the Brownian motion and which part of the price is somehow explained by this additional information uh, hidden in, in the investment strategy and wealth of the agent that influence asset prices. So um, the filtration generated by prices is somewhere in between the filtration uh, generated by the Brownian motion and the big filtration, but we don't know were exactly in between. And the main problem is not to know where in between uh, this filtration generating of, uh, by prices is, but um, we are not able to express it uh, as an, an, um, an enlargement of the Brownian filtration. So the Brownian filtration plus something else. This is, well, we did not manage to do it. So we, there is no Martingale representation property in this specific um, uh, filtration, under this specific filtration. So we have to deal not um, with a complete uh, uh, market, but with an incomplete market from the non-informed trader point of view, as he has not access to all the information that is driving the market. So here is the link between uh, completeness of market and information availability. So we will first uh, present the complete market uh, from the informed trader point of view and then uh, try to study it from the non-informed trader point of view. <coughs> the um, complete market point of view, so we take the point of view of the influential trader who has access to uh, all the information driving the market. Uh, we don't have a backward stochastic differential equation, only a backward stochastic differential equation anymore, but we have a coupling between the backward stochastic differential equation representing the hedging problem and the forward equation of prices who are uh, coupled uh, because of the inferential uh, uh, hypothesis. Under, well, standard, again, Lipschitz, linear growth and integrability hypothesis on all the coefficients. Uh, I say standard because it's the same standard hypothesis uh, as for the same problem if you don't have the problem of additional information. Uh, 
and additional integrability hypothesis under the new hypothesis Q, uh, we can prove existence and uh, uniqueness of this forward, uh, of the solution of this forward backward stochastic differential equation under the enlarged filtration. Uh, uh, under the condition to fit one of the three cases uh, of influence. As I said before, we have to uh, restrict the form of the influence that we allow here uh, on this uh, model. Either you have a, 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 what is called a weak influence, which means that B and sigma weakly depend on X and Z, here, I only wrote weakly depend because uh, uh, the real hypothesis is that depending on the Lipschitz and linear growth coefficients, uh, you, you can put a bond on, on B and sigma depending on X and Z, and, and this uh, the, uh, has not to exceed a, a certain epsilon. So, but, well, depending, the weakly depend on, on the other uh, coefficient uh, here under the uh, Lipschitz linear growth uh, coefficient. But if, if it fits the weak inference, if you have an inference but not, not that big, then um, everything B and sigma can depend on X and Z. Uh, the second case is uh, where C does not depend on price. Well, this is not that interesting. And the other one, uh, the last one is when the portfolio does not at all de um, influence the volatility of prices. Then you don't have uh, to have a weak dependence for the other ones. So you can have B and sigma that depend uh, on, on X and B that depend on Z without any additional uh, constraint. But uh, sigma uh, has to be independent uh, on the portfolio. Under one of the, these uh, three influence cases, the forward backward stochastic differential equation can be solved and has a unique solution, um, which is great because it financially means that the influent agent has a unique uh, admissible hedging strategy. This strategy is adapted to the big filtration and is not anymore a solution for the non-informed trader. The next step is then the comparison with the strategy of the non-informed uh, trader uh, who invests uh, on this market. <clears throat> so there we have to deal with uh, the, an incomplete market from the non-informed trader point of view. So a non-informed agent, again, uh, who invests on the uh, influenced market has the information F, uh, what I called FP just before, F tilde, which is in between the filtration generated by the Brownian motion and the filtration generated uh, by the Brownian motion and the information. So somewhere uh, in between. And we don't have any Martingale representation result uh, under this filtration. So no general solution uh, can be found or can be proven to, to appear for, for the hedging uh, um, backward stochastic differential equation under uh, the filtration generated by prices. And um, different methods uh, need to be used. We chose to use um, uh, Kunita Watanabe decomposition instead of exact uh, representation and uh, quadratic edging in incomplete markets as in Fulmer and Schweitzer in uh, 91. <coughs> Let's uh, consider Q and respectively QN, the set of all risk-neutral probabilities uh, from, for the insider trader, respectively for the non-insider trader. So the N means non-informed or non-insider trader. Uh, we have uh, the definition of the Kunita Watanabe decomposition, uh, writing uh, a non-exact representation with respect uh, to the martingale, plus a quadratic residual risk. Um, if we take a probability measure that is a probability measure for the insider trader, then we are in the a large, in the large uh, filter under the large, fil the larger filtration Y, and then we have an exact representation result. So we can write C as uh, the uh, expectation under Q tilde of C knowing. Uh, the sigma algebra generated by L 
plus this integral of um, the phi s l, uh, which is the portfolio uh, knowing l, uh, with respect to uh, the, the prices, the martingale. But if the martingale uh, is not a martingale, um, if it's a, a, a risk neutral probability for the non-informed trader, then we don't have the exact representation. So for any uh, Q which is a risk neutral probability for the non-informed trader, we have only, we can only write the Kunita Watanabe decomposition uh, of C with respect to uh, the filtration generated by prices and this risk neutral probability with respect to the martingale P. So we write the Kunita Watanabe decomposition. We, on one hand, we have from Fulmer and Pfizer and other results an expression of this, uh, of the integrant. <coughs> but um, what we want is to compare it to uh, the strategy of the informed trader. The, the, the aim is to compare both strategies. So one uh, of the results gave the, that the strategy for the non-informed uh, trader under any um, risk-neutral probability uh, can be written as the expectation of the um, strategy for the informed trader knowing the information of prices. This is uh, given, I will maybe not uh, uh, go into detail of the proof, but uh, uh, most of all, uh, it comes from uh, filtering theory. And uh, so we have first enlarged the filtration and after we use filtering theory uh, in order to, to adapt to the filtration generated by prices. So maybe the, the more important is to, to know that uh, the main point is to use a filter <coughs> filtering theory. <coughs> And another thing is that we, uh, we can derive from Mayavan derivative of Xi the expression of the strategy of the informed trader. So, well, it's not uh, very easy, but it's possible to have uh, both the strategy of the informed trader and then by filtering uh, the strategy of the non-informed trader. <coughs> so then we have a... A, a, different, um, uh, a difference between both strategies, and we can try to measure the, the lack of information. From the problem introduced by Schweitzer on the quadratic risk, we uh, studied the variance of the quadratic residual risk, and we obtained an expression of the quadratic residual risk um, which measures, measures somehow the risk taken by an agent uh, who doesn't know information L, so who invests on this market but doesn't know all the information driving the market. We have two different expressions. One, one is for uh, any probability measure, uh, which is probability measure for the non-informed trader but not for the informed trader. And if you have a probability measure for the informed trader, then we obtain a more simple expression. Um, well, when I say more simple, it's not that simple, but still we have an expression of the variance of the residual risk under a probability measure. Um, the first good thing is that a minimum risk exists and it corresponds to the minimum risk linked to the uninformation, the lack of information. Uh, the agent does not have uh, access to all the information driving the market and this gives a measure of uh, the lack of information. The hedging strategy of the non-informed agent that minimizes the risk under a given equivalent martingale measure is the conditional expectation uh, of the insider hedging strategy given the filtration, the information um, of prices. Uh, so given the, the information uh, of the non-informed agent. The main problem is that measuring a risk 
under a specific uh, probability measure is kind of arbitrary, and uh, the evaluated risk is uh, the risk of the model under the chosen risk neutral uh, um, measure, risk neutral <coughs> measure, and it's not uh, the intern uh, risk of the model. Uh, the historical uh, probability measure, uh, for example, is not taken into account, and well, so it's uh, somehow a measure, but it's not uh, maybe satisfying enough. Um, here you can see an example of an influence that fits all the, the um, uh, hypotheses I, I said uh, I presented before. Well, I did not present before. Uh, Lipschitz and linear growth and everything. Here, uh, maybe the main uh, point is that you, you, you have strong initial information yeah, you have a, a volatility that can that may jump, and your information is you know when it will jump. Otherwise, you only observe uh, uh, the market. And uh, so this fits Lipschitz and linear uh, growth and uh, uh, integrability. And we we are in the third case of influence because the the volatility is not um, influenced by uh, the the, is independent of that. It's not influenced by the portfolio of the trader. Only the price, only the drift uh, can be influenced by price and also strategy. So you have an influence model that satisfies all our uh, hypotheses. Uh, here, backward and forward, backward, the stochastic differential equation give uh, a nice tool to, to study the, the hedging problem. Uh, of course, it's more difficult, but also more interesting when, uh, when no representation property uh, exists and uh, when the asymmetry of information makes the market incomplete. Uh, the interesting point of view um, may probably, uh, is probably more uh, um, fits more for non-standard markets like uh, insurance or reinsurance market where the asymmetrical information uh, is more important and maybe explains more uh, the incompleteness of the markets than uh, uh, really other ones than uh, on standard financial markets. Uh, there are still further questions and, and further research um, because the study of the incompleteness uh, of the market and the link between the filtration generated by prices and the lack of information uh, has to be deeper uh, studied. For example, um, what would be interesting is uh, to try to, to know which part of the information uh, is transferred to the market, which part of L uh, is transferred to, is, is uh, readable by the, reading the price, uh, which means knowing where the filtration of prices is in between the filtration of uh, um, the Brownian motion and, and the, the big filtration. And um, on the other side, on the other, the, the other point of view is uh, to try to find what kind of, uh, of information, of additional information, is sufficient to complete the market because if the, incomplete, if the incompleteness of the market is um, explained only by uh, an, a lack of information, then of course L can complete the market, but is it obvious that L is the only information that you have to add uh, to complete the market? I, I don't think so. I, so maybe tr trying to find uh, which is the minimal information that completes the market uh, will probably help to, to measure this lack of information, to better measure, measure uh, this lack of information and, and try to find what is the best risk-neutral uh, uh, probability choice and more precisely how to measure the intern risk of the, this lack of information and relate it to a measure of the incompleteness of the market. But what uh, I think is interesting here is that we constructed a, a market where, where all the incompleteness is explained by a lack of information and absolutely not by a lack of assets. So I thank you for your attention.
Do we have time for questions or remarks? Uh, just a naive comment. Uh, could one not assume that the informed trader's filtration is just um, FT plus one and then measure that? Uh, doing doing that, uh, you, you cannot because here the main um, hypothesis is that the information has to be uh, on, on a time t prime that is greater than the horizon of the of the hedging problem. So if you since everything moves with the, you know, everybody is trading with the same t's, the informed trader has the, the, the two companies are very mm. merged for sure. So at T plus one, he knows that information, and he makes that it. Or, or yeah. So could you not enlarge it like that? Because it's not going to be that far away from T to be. I uh, I know um, this kind of problem can also be uh, solved with progressive enlargement of filtration, uh, but it. Well, it's a bit different, but uh, we also studied uh, uh, this kind of problem with progressive enlargement of filtration. So rather than, so you could have like one bit of deterministic, <coughs> because if the person knows it for sure, there's nothing random about it. It's a deterministic price then. Of course, but uh, you know it for sure at a certain date, and, and all your hedging problems in between, you have some information, um, but uh, the market will uh, uh, maybe do things before uh, your precise information that may be influenced by, by your um, portfolio or your investment because you know that something will, will happen for sure and, and the influence uh, can happen uh, before. I don't know if I'm sure. Just a comment. One of the advantages of the benchmark approach to finance is that you can do the prices under the physical measure. And that has great advantages when you do statistics, in particular filtering. You do not have to do it under an and measure. And the, the, the risk minimization that you do under the marketing and measure can be done under the physical measure. Yes, but uh, all the results where you have the comparison between the both uh, investment strategy are only results under an equivalent Martingale measure. But I, I know, but uh, to link to link the two, uh, I have to be under an equivalent Martingale measure. That that's why uh, I use the the link with the equivalent Martingale measure. Yes, but uh, well. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Just a comment. Yeah. Okay, so let's start again.